welcome to the show on a huge day. I'm Megan Kelly, and we begin this morning with something virtually no one in Hollywood ever thought they would hear. About 90 minutes ago, Harvey Weinstein turned himself in to New York City police, arrested, processed, and charged with rape, criminal sex act, sex abuse, and sexual misconduct for incidents involving two separate women. About 100 women have come forward accusing the disgraced movie mogul of some form of sexual misconduct, and moments ago, he was walked out of a New York City police precinct in handcuffs. Look at this. Look at this. What a thing to see. What a thing to see. And he was escorted into court. NBC's own Craig Melvin is at the precinct with the very latest. Craig? Megan, good morning to you. Weinstein was fingerprinted. Uh, he was processed, and his mugshot you, is being taken right now uh, at that courthouse. We can also pass along some breaking news. Uh, just moments ago, we learned some new details related to these charges, and pardon me while I read them. Several sources familiar with the investigation say that the rape charge uh, that he is facing, those rape charges stem from a complaint from a woman not previously named publicly. So this is a woman that we did not know about until this rape charge. We'll learn more about her and those specific uh, accusations that she's making here in the next hour or so. The sex abuse charges stem from a complaint uh, from Lucia Evans. Lucia Evans has gone uh, public with her allegations just a few days ago. Uh, she told a magazine that she would be filing charges against Weinstein. She said in part, quote, at a certain point, you have to think about the greater good of humanity. But again, as you indicated, Harvey Weinstein has been charged with, among other things, rape, and he is in handcuffs inside a New York City courtroom right now. Craig, thank you. Joining me now, one of the first women to speak out about her experience with Harvey Weinstein. She says it was not a sudden decision. She says 20 years ago, she told Weinstein, if he did what he did to her, to any other woman, she would talk. She says he did, so she did. Please welcome Rose McGowan. What a thing to have you here today. Chills. I'm honored. What does this feel like for you to see him in cuffs? It's surreal. It's real. It's both. And it's, it's kind of like living in a, a, a Salvador Dali painting, this whole thing. And to see him do the Bill Cosby old man perp walk on the way in, so we already know what he's planning, to see him in cuffs on the way out, whether he smiled or not, that's a very good feeling. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think this day would come, Rose? And did you ever really believe this would come? I actually didn't believe this day would come. I didn't believe this day would come, and I'm so proud of Lucia Evans and Paz Vega and Justice for starting. I mean, we have to understand, he turned himself in on a Friday. That's a slow news weekend, Memorial Day, so he still has privileges from high up somewhere. But this is... This is a big strike into the heart of abuse of power. And this shows people worldwide, which is what I was hoping the whole time, that this cannot and will not stand. Do you think he thought this day would come? No. No, he did not. Because the system was created to protect men like him. The system was created by men like him and his accomplices to protect him. And, and I know right now of a woman who's sexually harassing somebody. It's, it's gender neutral, it's abuse of power. If there were more women in power, maybe we'd see more parity on that side. Mm -hmm. But he had the nerve to walk in the women's march down the street at Sundance where he raped me. It's intense. The DA in this case, Cy Vance, uh, was accused of being a little slow uh, to bring these charges, despite the fact that he had a woman who wore a wire and got Harvey on tape. Amber Gutierrez, who's so brave. That's right. And 
do, my question to you, though, is do you think that you and other women like you shamed Cy Vance into bringing these charges, that, you, that that was an important piece of this? Absolutely. I, I do, too. Completely. This was not, and, and that's a tragic thing. It's tragic that it takes over 100 women, and that probably means, like, a 1,000, let's be real. I mean, this, is, this man had hunting grounds all over the world, and he had accomplices and a complicity machine. He was, you know, the cult leader of Hollywood, I would say, mm -hmm. their king. But he was really Like a protected. god. That's like what Meryl said. Like a god. He tied with God for thanks at the Oscars. And to see that constantly and to live in that town, I was there by myself since I was 15, and to see people just lay wreaths at his feet even though they knew, today is a good day. That was one of the things that you've been saying all along, is that this wasn't a secret for you. You, you had told many people right who away. just chose not to believe you. And I feel like that is one of the critical differences now, is this time you were believed eventually, like the women came forward. You were believed. This time the Cosby accusers were believed. And a sea change is happening. It's not done. It hasn't happened. It's happening right now, right? I think it is happening. I think we're, and I know there's fatigue, and I know it's hard for people to see day after day. You're like, what? I thought he was a good guy. What? I thought, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, I wish it were true. And you know what? I think if we can get at the rotten apples, get rid of them, then, then great people can come up and flourish. And I think we need that as a society. I wanted to show people that if you cut off the head of power, that it will clean house down. Instead of being activists biting ankles, I wanted to go to the head. And I think this whole time, this movement, what it is, is, is just be a good person, be human, treat others with human dignity, human respect. There will always be sociopaths and predators like Harvey Weinstein. But I find his complicity machine a lot more guilty. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's been in place for years, and it's still in place. Let's be real. Super It's real. still in place, not just in Hollywood, but elsewhere. And bit by bit, we're chipping away. But we, as he as he walks out, I mean, like just that image of him walking out in cuffs is so huge. And you know, we have to say for the record, he denies it. He denies all allegations of non-consensual sex. All, you know, I don't know how many now women we have accused him. We all wanted him. him. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Look at the number of accusers on that board. But that's the thing. It's these women's lives have been changed forever as a result of what he did. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's one of the offensive parts of when people talk about rehabilitation. Because not just in the case of Harvey, but in the case of all the men who have been swept up in the Me Too movement, we're already hearing talks of reemergence, rehabilitation, forgiveness. My own reaction to it has been, can the women get a minute? Can they get a minute yeah. before we start shifting to how hard this has been on the men? Well, also, they, oh, they're losing their jobs. They're actually criminals. And if they were poor men, they would go to jail. <laughs> what, what, what would you say to him? Like, if he, if he were watching this today, what, what would you say to him? We got you. We got you. Yeah. You did. You, you made that promise 20 years ago a after he came after you, and it came to fruition, but not without a lot of pain to you, a lot of damage to you, and all, and all the women who, you know, when the, what you don't remember is that when Rose first came forward, when the other, other women came, first came forward, they did not know that he would go down. In fact, it's the same as, as it was at Fox, for that matter. They're, we believed he would not go down. We believed we would do this and possibly at great peril. And then to find out that he did was such a moment of, oh my God, wait, maybe we don't have to live like this. Maybe womankind yes. doesn't have to live like this. And men and, and any gender, nobody has to live with abuse of power. Nobody has to live with fear. And, and you know, we've, I think, all worked at places where there, it would be so great if it weren't for that one person, right? the toxic from the top down. So get rid of that person. It's okay. And be brave. And, and yes, we have to confront ugliness as a society. You know, if you look at it like growth, right? When you got taller, your legs hurt, right? So we're in the growing part of this whole thing right now. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of questions like, what next for the Me Too movement? Where is it going? Where do you see it in five years? I'm like, 
this has never happened. We've never been here in history. When I shaved my head, I noticed a side effect uh, that people could actually hear the words coming out of my mouth. I, I'm, very, I'm very into the hair because it's mm -hmm. symbolic on a much larger level. I, that's actually one of the number one things I wanted to ask you okay. about. It's much deeper than you know, and we're going to pick it up there right after the break. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.